Uh, okay, so let's restart this. Okay, so we should be back live, and hopefully you guys can actually see what uh, what I wanted to now, which is, uh, so I've got this Word document with the stuff on it. Let's make sure that the new stream is live. Okay, good. We're, we've got it back up. So I'm not so, sorry, eh, not sure what the issue was there, but I'll figure it out. Uh, okay, so we've got our four input patterns. We counted them. There are, in fact, 16 of them, and I've put them in a very particular order, the details for which we'll, we'll talk sort of in a second. Um, and what I want to do is I want to assign a shorthand to each of these 16 patterns, okay? And I'm not going to just do it willy-nilly. There's, there's a method to the madness. So first off, let's see sort of why did I put these in the pattern that I did? Well, first off, it probably makes sense to start with all zeros, right? What do you think the shorthand for that one will be? Probably zero. That would be a very logical guess. All right. What about the next one? What do you think might be the shorthand for that? Oh, that would certainly make sense. That's a nice order here. And what do you think this one is? Probably two. Okay, now the better question is why is it two? So let's go back and, and think. Let me just type uh, a number. Um, uh, I'm going to... If I type the following number, 1832, what does that mean? I mean, you guys know what it means. You don't have to think about it. But what, what really does it mean? So, like, think back to elementary school. It's 1,832. Okay. So, the, uh, the numeral system we use, the Hindu-Arabic, uh, well, Western Hindu-Arabic numerals, right? The Eastern ones work the same way. The symbols are a little different. Um, what's the genius behind them? The genius behind them is that you only need a certain number of symbols, and the position of the symbols tell you their value. In addition, um, so it's not just the symbol itself that tells you its value, but where it is, right? So this is why you know the difference between 20 and 2, or 22, or something, right? You know that one of the twos is in the tens place, and so it counts for 20, and the other two is in the ones place, so it counts for just two ones, okay? Does that make sense, right? All right, now, if we're doing all of our stuff where the digits, the bits, can only be a zero or a one, that's actually, by the way, why we call it a bit. It stands for binary digit. Okay, so it's not just something that we made up out of, well, we kind of did make it up out of thin air, but, um, right. So, uh, what happens to the place values in our normal number system with 1832 when you move one position to the left? You're going up by a factor of 10 each time, okay? So, hence, the 2 is in the 1's place, the 3 is in the 10's place, the 8's in the 100's place, and so on, Okay? Each time you're going up by a factor of 10, because what base is our number system? What is it based on? It's all based on 10, okay? Why is it based on 10? Probably because we have 10 fingers, okay? Um, could we have based it on any other thing? Sure. Uh, have cultures in history done so? So what other base systems are used? Yes. Who uses base 12? It was base 20 for the Mayans. Uh, although there is a vestibule of base 12 in English. Okay, so think about it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then suddenly we switch to 13, 14, right? So going up to 12 is, is sort of built into English. In French, the switchover happens between 16 and 17, which is infuriating because, well, I mean, if you, which language did you, quelle est votre langue maternelle? Français? Pas la langue d'Afrique? 
Okay. Uh, so in French, you, you have special words for 1 through 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 16 also. And then 17, you switch. So 16 is says, and then 17 is deset, so 10 and 7, right? Um, the uh, uh, ancient Mesopotamians, this is a little bit of a, an acronym, kind of used a base 60 system. Uh, and I say kind of for technical reasons that ask me after class if you want to know. Um, is there anything that we do that's sort of kind of base 60? Yes? Time. And also measurement of angles, right? So degrees. Because guess what? Those are the same thing, right? So the reason there's 360 degrees in a circle and 60 degrees in a minute and or 60 minutes in an hour or something like that, right? That is all complete holdover from ancient Mesopotamia. It's just stuck. Now, the French did actually try a metric or a base 10 time system uh, during the revolution. Um, let's just say those several people lost their heads. Okay. Uh, all right. So if we're going to do this where the digits, the bits, can either be just a zero or a one, then what base are we working with here? Base 2, right? Okay, in the sense that what's the largest single digit you can write in base 10? A 9, right? So it's one more than the, the largest digits you can write. So if 1 is the largest digit we can write, this is a base 2 system. So what that means is that each place value, rather than going up by powers of 10 like we do in our normal everyday system, this one's going to go up in powers of 2 each time, okay? So the far right position will be the ones place, then the twos place, then the fours place, and then finally the eights place. Okay, because we're going up by a factor of two each time. Is that all right? Oui ou non? Oui? Tu comprends? Ah, D'accord. Uh, okay, so... The pattern here is I'm just saying, what does this actually represent? Well, all zeros, okay, that's no shock, right, that it's a zero. But this one, the second one on the list, a one, where is the one? It's in the ones place. So what does this count for? One. And I don't have to think about the other three places because they're all just zero anyway. All right, but let's look at the next one. I have a one, but which position is it in? It's in the twos place. So that counts as a two, and all the other things are zero, so that's it. Okay, the next one's where it starts to get fun. Okay, so zero, zero, one, one should be three, right? Because I've got a one in the two's place and another one in the one's place, and last time I checked, one plus two was equal to three. We oui ou non? Okay, now, you can guess what the remaining ones are going to be because I put them in a logical order, right? So the next one ought to be four, just because that's the number that comes after three. Is it? Where is the one? It's in the third position from the right, so that's the one, twos, fours position, right? So it counts as a four, and everybody else is zero, so that's it. Okay, and then we continue and we go up uh, each time. Okay, so, oops. And then we're going to run into a little bit of a problem. So right there, what's that number, that bit pattern, if we do the same thing? We've got a one in the which positions? The eighth place and the twos place. Okay, so what does this number count as? Ten. So what am I going to type? Am I going to type one zero? No. I want this to be a single symbol, just like the rest of them. But because we, in English anyway, uh, use a base ten system, there are only ten digits. 
So I'm going to start using the alphabet. Okay. And so the, this one is A. Okay. Not Tim. Okay. Now you can now guess what the remaining ones are going to be because the cat's out of the bag. Right. What is the next one going to be? B, C, D, and so on, and then we'll finish out with F. Okay, so these are our abbreviations for these bit patterns. Oops. Okay, and uh, what, what does A kind of represent in our, our mind? It represents 10, but we've done so with the single symbol. Okay, how many bit patterns are there here? 16. Okay, so what I've actually defined in the right is a base 16 system that has digits 0 through F. Okay, we could, if we wanted, do all of our arithmetic in base 16. Now, we don't because most of us don't have 16 fingers. Right, you'd be on a traveling circus if you had 16 fingers. Um, but yeah, okay, so this sort of four to one compression, if you will, we started with four symbols and we compressed it to a one symbol thing. Okay, this, this set of 16 things is called hexadecimal. For hex is six and des is 10, right? So Hexadecimal is base 16. Okay, is that okay? So if I had, for example, an 8-bit input, okay, so a circuit that had 8 inputs to it, what am I going to do if I wanted to condense that 8 inputs into something more compact? Thoughts? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it as chunk in chunks of four, okay? So for example, let me just make up some sort of bit pattern here. So let's say I had that, okay? So I've got eight inputs to some hypothetical circuit, and I just made up the string here, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. If I want to compactify this, what I'll do is I'll just take it in chunks of four. Okay, so let me put a space or like a line or something. I'll just put a space in there for right this instant just to make it easier to see. Um, if you're doing this on paper, I like to put just like a little bar in between them at every four um, uh, or, or put spaces in either way. Okay, and let me scroll down so you guys can see this a little better. Um, so... Once we've separated it into four bit chunks, then we just do each one of them individually. So what's this one on the right, zero, one, one, zero, that is six. And what about the one on the front, one, zero, zero, one is nine, okay? So this in hexadecimal, I would write as nine, six. Oops. Okay, as its hex representation. Okay, now. Here's something I want to be very clear about, um, although right now, it, it, if, if you were to just walk in the room and see this, you would make the mistake. What is, Ethan, say this out loud. Okay, thanks for walking into the trap for me. Okay, so is that correct to say 96? No. What do we really have? Nine six. Okay, so the temptation when you see numbers in hexadecimal that don't involve the letters is to say them as if they were a base ten number, ninety six. Okay, but that's not nine tens and six ones, is it? It's nine sixteen and six ones. Okay, so uh, in order to denote this and not be ambiguous, right? So if, if Ethan had literally just walked into the room and saw nine and six up there on the screen, he would have said, oh, the number 96 must be important for something, okay? Completely reasonable. But 
because I didn't tell Ethan that this wasn't 96, it was really 96 in hexadecimal. So how am I going to tell him that it's in hexadecimal? That's one way, okay, uh, is to put a zero, oops, zero X in front of it, okay? Or the other thing I could do is say something like hex or like a subscript of hex. Um, oops, I like this way best, which is to put zero X in front of it. Uh, that is a relatively standard uh, thing in the computing world. And the X tells me that it's hexadecimal, okay? And if Ethan had walked in this time, he would have said 0x96. Oh, it must be hex because, yeah. Okay, so... Um, what about if we only had seven inputs? So, like, let's say we had the exact same thing, but it was, oops. Let's say it was like that. What should I do if it's not actually a clean multiple of four? Well, good question, right? Well, is this the same as that. Eh, we could argue about that, right? So in some sense, yes, it is, in a mathematical sense. In a perhaps circuit sense, well, no, because there's not s eight inputs, there's seven. Okay. Um, for numeric reasons, though, uh, if you have a, um, if you don't have a clean set of four, you just pad it with zeros as needed, yes, on the left, okay. And the reason is that we put it there is, so let's, let's say we were doing the same thing in base 10, is those two numbers are the same thing, correct? But this is something different, okay. Um, yes, so you pad the zeros on the most significant bit uh, digit side, not the least significant, okay? Uh, now, I was careful when I said that because how do we write our numbers in, you know, on paper or how did I type these things? Where was the least significant, the smallest position? On the right, and the largest position was on the left. Could we imagine a system in which I did it the other way? Right? I could put the most significant on the right and the least significant on the left. We sometimes actually write polynomials in that order. Right? So if I wrote 1 plus x plus x squared plus, right, I'm kind of writing things where the, uh, the, uh, the powers or the significance increases as you move to the right rather than decreases. Okay? Um, and in computing, in circuitry, actually some computers use one order and others use the other. Okay, and we call this Indianness, not like uh, from the country India, but it's actually a joke from Gulliver's Travels. Okay, so uh, has anybody read Gulliver's Travels? A little bit? Okay, so... The big Indians, E-N-D-I-A-N, -N, were people, so if they had an egg and they wanted to crack an egg, they cracked it on the big end, the wide end. And the little Indians cracked it on the little end. And then, of course, proceeded to, like, go to war with each other over this. Okay. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's, it's a joke from, from uh, that. This being a liberal arts college, you should all find that hilarious. Yeah, okay. Um, right. So uh, most of the time, we'll use a little Indian system, meaning that the most significant position is to the left, not to the right, just because that's the same as uh, the way we do it in everyday num number systems, right? So if you go to the grocery store or Walmart, right, all of the numbers are written with the most significant digit on the left and the least significant digit on the right. You're used to that, so we'll just stick with it um, for the most part. 
Um, okay, so uh, that's probably a good place to stop because we got to do the seating chart. Um, so uh, I will see you guys whenever.